Dragon Ball Super Episode 43 Review. The episode is titled Goku's Key is Out of Control. Lots of trouble taking care of Pan. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Link in the description. Thanks for watching. Now, I'll start off with the only real negative I have about this episode. Because there's only one thing that I genuinely hated about this episode. That would be a, a Raleigh thing. A Raleigh hasn't been in the theory for a year. We were a lot of people were looking forward to seeing her again. And her cameo was like 15 seconds, probably less than like 7 or 8. She just, you just see her poking what appeared to be a piece of pink crap with a wooden stick. And she just turns around, waves at Goku and says hello, and then he has instant transmission away. I did not like that. But let's get started with the rest of the review. The plot of the episode is incredibly basic. So, due to using his Kaioken times 10 along with his Super Saiyan Blue form in his fight with Hit during the Universe 6 and 7 tournament, Goku's body has been damaged to a point where he can no longer properly control his Ki and he has to not train or fight. He can't use Ki or fight really in any way for an extended for a good amount of period of time, for it, or he'll never be able to fight again if you have to take that break. So King Kai or Kaiosama makes the suggestion that Goku and goes and spend time with his granddaughter Pan and get to know her because he hasn't really had time to spend with her because of everything that had been going on. So the episode is pretty much all about Goku and Pan. So we could have thought. Thank about Goku. God, I'm I had joking, I have a surprise right? for you guys. No, there was no GT in this episode. GT is still non canon and it still has nothing to do with Super. Though I can't help but feel Toei was referencing GT a little bit with a ton of stuff that happened in this episode, but I'll get more into that as I go on. But no, Goku, as, when he's flying back to his house after per Chi Chi's request, going to see King Kai to find out about his sickness. It, I think it's called Delayed Key Disorder. So after he finds out from King Kai about Delayed Key Disorder, he goes home and he pretty much destroys their house. So they only have one option left. They have to go stay with Gohan and Videl and Pam. Now, this is the disappointing part of the episode. Like, oh wait, Toei has to have something in there that'll piss every every single Gohan fan off. Usually, they cannot do, they cannot go one ep episode without either having Gohan being in it and pissing us off, or him just pissing us off by not being there at all. But do we see him? He's at a dinner with Videl with this big, I don't even know, this guy, I, don't even, I forgot even what the hell he was, I wasn't really paying attention, I was so pissed off when I saw Gohan. But he was pretty much complimenting Gohan, like, on his performance at the conference, he thought Gohan did great, and he was, you know, they were talking business, and Gohan got a call from Goku. He went into the hall, took the call, talked to Goku, and gave, said they could stay as long as they wanted. However, this is the whole thing here, is that Gohan was full-blown a suit. He didn't look like he, he... I did notice he looked like maybe it was just the suit. It very well could have been the suit he was wearing. But it looked like he was developing some muscles again. I mean, so maybe that training is somewhat working. But in the end, let's be honest, Gohan looked weak as hell and it was very... Very disappointing, but you know what? Whatever. Uh, there was also a scene where Videl was apparently kind of trying to get on uh, the guy wipes the good side by giving her a free picture of her father. Now, something tells me they do this all the time because Videl's father is Mr. Satan and the whole world loves to worship big Satan. Yeah, I had to make that joke. No, but so we cut back over to the to the house of Gohan and Videl, and now we get into one of my favorite parts of the episode, which is Piccolo. 
So, in case you don't remember, Piccolo had been shown babysitting Pan and being very involved with Gohan's life. Now that he's married, like he babysits Pan, he was, he's in the wedding picture. It's like, I don't always sound funny. He's in the, oh, he's in one of their wedding pictures. I thought we found that hilarious. No, but let's be honest here. So, Piccolo is pretty much like, now that you guys are here, I can leave. I have more important things to do. But then he, so he's like, Chi Chi, I assume you know how to make baby food. Chi Chi tells him, of course, you raised two boys. All this new stuff in the fridge, Chi Chi cuts, I mean, Piccolo cuts her off and explains Pan likes to eat this and loves eating this, likes this, like that. So he shows her where the picture books star, where the toys are, tells her, tells them about what to do when she starts to cry. It's just, it's amazing. It, it's really good. Also, the voice after they pick for Pan, it's really good at doing the baby voice thing. She is amazing. That woman is great at it. The other the, the, the way she said, pick it up. I think I did. I can't even copy it. It's just a babyish way of saying the name. But it is just it's great. It's great. Like you would you would never be able to tell that was, that was an actual person doing it. But no, but let's go on to the actual meat of the episode. So, Goku and Pan spend time together, and we get to see this one awesome shot of him on the roof with, um, uh, Piccolo, and he pretty much straight up tells Piccolo, even you could beat me right now. Now, I want to clarify, this does not mean Piccolo is stronger than Goku normally. If you think Piccolo can actually beat Goku, like, Goku from the hit fight, if you think he can beat the Goku at full power, you're an idiot. I'm so, I'm gonna be blunt. You're an, if you think that you're an idiot, all right, you're an idiot. People, some people are thinking that if you're one of them. Go get some help because that, because that, that's so stupid. But only reason Goku said that was because he is saying because of the delayed key disorder he has at the moment, Piccolo could beat him. Without the disorder, he could beat Piccolo. He so, but he then goes on to commenting on how weird it is to not having trained. And he's and he's the thought and Pan calls him Papa and he complains like no he the Goku start feeling old which just, I don't think some fans notice Goku is old Saiyans age very slowly once they reach maturity so Goku is like Goku border is like in like ten years Goku going to be like getting to like his sixties and seventies like he's getting up there in age. He is old, but he pointed out, he said, you should call me Grandpa, which is, of course, another reference to GT, because Pang would always be grieving for Grandpa's health. Now, I will say, just in GT, just then quickly, I'm only going to say this, considering it with Goku time, like, give all the relevant characters, that is, you can excuse that, but that, but this is a super review, what am I doing talking about GT? Alright, Pan in this episode. Of course I gotta talk about GT. But while they're sitting on the roof, you get this really nice shot where Pan starts reaching to the skies. Like, she wants to go up in the air. She wants to, like, fly around and stuff. And I'm assuming she's been in the air before. I, I get the vibe she had it, but I'm going to assume she had because of her mother being able to fly, her father can fly, and her babysitter can fly. I, I just pointed that out there. Maybe you could... You could nod that to an inconsistent thing to a plot hole, but you know what, there's no reason for you to think that she hasn't been in the air, and I'm not going to get pissed off about something like that in this week's episode. No, but though, Goku comments on how he would love to fly around, to fly her up there and take her for a ride, but he can't right now because he's sick. And he then goes on to comment that he, Pang will be a super Saiyan before they even know it. And he, and he like, oh, He'll be happy to teach her how. So I kind of just like, okay, whoa, Goku, chill. This is like a one-year-old girl. Seriously, she does not need to be a super Saiyan yet. But, so they all go to sleep, and Pang wanders out of the house and bumps into the p gang with a new p machine, I think they call it. And yes, yeah, it's modeled after the ones from Dragon Ball. And they had overheard Gohan talking on the phone to Goku, so they know he is in a weakened state. They seem to think it, 
that Goku would be key. They seem to think without his key, Goku won't be able to stop the robot. Let's all be honest, Goku could just punch it. Goku could punch right a hole, a hole right through the robot. He, I think he did do, he punched a hole through a very similar robot back in Dragon Ball. But now I just want to point out that that is not what happened. So they find Pan, and so when they hear, uh, you know, they like, they don't know what to do, they're interacting with Pan. When they hear Piccolo yelling at Goku because they had let Pan wander out of the house during the night, like, we had to find her, they get freaked out because the scary green guy that could destroy a planet is really pissed off now, and the reason he pissed is standing right in front of them, so they decide to do the smart thing, which apparently in their eyes is to kidnap Pan. So they, they pick Pan up and they run into their peel-off machine and fly away, and they pretty much, they can't take care of the baby. That's the joke. These people that want to conquer the world can't take care of Pan. If she pooping, she, uh, Pan p took a poop in her own pants. <laughs> and then you have, uh, Mai is like handing her to peel off, like, sir, you change her diaper, you change her. They can't change her. You have Stu there, who's a dog, so his nose is very sensitive, and he's already a guy. They can't open the windows in the peel-off machine. No, but so peel-off gets pissed off and hits the button that causes the peel-off machine to fly into space. And Pan starts crying. She gets all freaked out. And so Pan gets up on the table. And she powers up. I, okay, this is, this is clearly a comedy scene because it's just it's too... I can't take the scene seriously. But she has a yellow... Like, uh, no, you like a white aura around her, very teeny. The Pilaf gang is hanging onto her leg and talking in space. That's the reason you wrote it a comedy. This had nothing to do with a science being able to breathe in space. Because Mai and Shu and Pilaf were all talking and they're human. So they should die instantly already, they're not. But the fact that they're alive alone is proof that this is a joke scene. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Now, Pan starts reaching for the stars like she wants to fly and she wants, she wants to see the universe, I think. I think that's the mindset Pan has right now. But I don't know if she's a baby. She, she could think the planets look like good food for all we know. She's like one. Yes, 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 she's doing things Goku couldn't do until he was like 21. But that's not gonna look, I shouldn't let it bother me. It's a slice of life episode. But so she, a, a picture of like, her grandfather slapped this through her head, so she go and so she go back down to Earth. She yeah, pan herself, slides down to Earth, drops off the pilaf gang, flies into her house, gets up, gets the blanket, and gets under it and lies down on the couch. A one year old girl did this. Now I don't really have too much of a problem with her like but things he was doing, but that wasn't very smart on Toei part, because is, now Pan will not only have to be very powerful, but now people are also going to expect her to be the, like, the, like, the smartest person on the planet. The girl could, per, should be smarter than Bulma by the time she's like eight, because she, she's doing things at this age. She's doing these things at this age that she should not understand. The concept of light, of like the idea of going and getting on the couch, didn't even occur to her yet. But it does, and I'm not gonna let it fly, but she goes and gets on the couch, and Gohan and Videl, we see them walking in, and they're, and they're looking at uh, everybody like, why are you all so tired? And they explain that they saw Pan ran away, and then left the house, but uh, they found her to sleep on the couch, and that she must have gone in and like, fell asleep in like a closet or something. So, so none of them know the thing with the Pilaf gang happened. I don't understand how they didn't send Pan's key because she must have been putting out a good amount of it, right? Because she's flying. I like to believe that she, I'm hoping she can't also suppress her key because that would be even more ridiculous. But you know, so Videl and Gohan comment that they've been doing it, Pan has been doing that kind of stuff a lot lately. But this is where we get something that is very important, a line that people need to remember. When Gohan is asked about the job he was interviewing for, he tells them, I got the job, but I had to turn it down. And Chi Chi is, of course, like, why? 
and he explained that the job would have required him to stay away from Vidal and Pam for a pe an extended period, and he wasn't going to do that. Now, this is a whole point I make all the time. Gohan is not a fighter. He doesn't like fighting. And when you ask him uh, whether, whether he wants to fight, he'd much rather spend time hanging out with Videl, with Videl and playing with his daughter than he would going and training and fighting in these tournaments against the gods and all this crap. Yes, he did to show an interest in fighting in the tournament, but that was more like a fun, yeah, let's go on a vacation and all have fun. It'd be equivalent to if, you're, if, you, if your father would want to go go no, go away for a little bit and play chess. He was looking at it as nothing fun, not something serious. He does not want to be a serious martial artist. This episode is just a great job of displaying that. But I feel if there's one thing this episode did very well, it was showing off the relationship between Goku and Pan. Because in GT, that relationship is definitely there. But GT non-canon, but some people need to forget the last three chapters of the manga, Pan and Uber there. So if you're the last three chapters of the manga, you see Pan is very close to her grandfather, and this is kind of explaining how they became so close, and I like that. Now, you know, if I have to rate this episode, just, I, genuinely, I didn't record my reaction, because I didn't think the episode would be very good. It was really good. I got a lot of blasts out of it. The episode had a lot of great visual humor. Visual humor. It's nothing you have to watch to understand, but it's really good. So if I had to rate it, I would give it a 5 out of 5. I cannot honestly think of something that, uh, in this episode that really bothered me to the point where I'll, when I think about it, I'll get annoyed. I really enjoyed the episode. I left. I would, when I stopped watching it and I walked away, I was very pleased with what I had seen. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Dragon Ball Super episode 43. I know this was a bit on the long side. I had a lot to say on it. But, guys, I hope you enjoyed. So, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Tell me your thoughts on the episode in the comments section down below and all that. And remember, guys, above all else, to have a great day.